Hello and a very warm welcome to the Grassroots Weekender Show. Yes, we're back, it's Friday already and we give the young commentators an extra day off because at the end of the day, I forgot last week that it's still in their Easter holidays so they've still got things to do, the family are organising um, plenty of and also don't forget, it is Grand National Weekend so I'm not saying the kids are going but days out and the parents will be organising things for them as well and most of the grassroots football is off unless you've got an early kick-off tomorrow. So it really is a really busy sporting day on the calendar here on Merseyside so uh, I'm sure everyone will be planning things to do, maybe parties out in the back because the weather's not going to be too bad tomorrow. So good luck and also we've got Everton hosting Fulham at Goodison Park there tomorrow so that'll be a good atmosphere and definitely a win for Everton because Fulham have really gone out of form since a certain incident and talk about incidents people have been questioning me about the uh, incident that took place last weekend at Arsenal Liverpool at Anfield um, involving an official and a player well there you go I kept out of it I didn't put anything here on the post or anything I just wondered um, Okay, we could say, because referees have really, really gone on de defensive, and why not? And you've got the other side of things where players, well, players haven't spoke, but fans have, backing the player um, and asking what would have happened if it had been the other way around, with the player doing that to the official. You know, things steamroll, and lucky enough, and I'm glad, really, um, because I could always say that Andy Robinson, the, the human must have been really really rife in dressing rooms and still is probably they're all having a little bit of a laugh and a joke about it and it's lovely to know that the official and Andy Robinson spoke together and um, yeah they spoke about it and the FA have stepped in and there's no further action I think that's it you know what I mean they're adults they get on with things this did happen and when I was looking at first I just thought yeah Andy Robinson take it on the chin I can imagine that would have been rife in the dressing rooms and still will be um, and I don't think they would have wanted anything and why he should have been banned because he's worked very really hard to get all his credentials to become an official at the Premier League so yeah common sense prevails everyone stand back people forget about that one they'll just make jokes about it won't they and it keeps the referees going as well and especially in grassroots football I don't think that would have been a message to everyone at grassroots football, yeah, I, I really don't. Um, unless we see all these referees now taking their um, things into their own hands, I doubt it very, very much indeed. Anyway, loads of respect on and off the field of play. So I'm glad that one's been put to bed, and we can just get on and just watch the football, the Premier League game now. It was just one of those things, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, Anyway, uh, yeah, glad it's over and don't forget we're putting our posters out now until the 29th of this month where we're showing our respect towards the referees in grassroots football. We're getting the support of the PGMOL so our official will be wearing the t-shirt if he's doing a game there on the weekend off. Um, so thank you very, very much. They're all supporting grassroots as well. So they're supporting the referees at grassroots. So I'm hoping all you grassroots football teams out there will support it, get behind us like all the government bodies are doing so. County FAs, I want your support on it to get in touch with all your leagues to tell them that it's a massive awareness weekend. We need to promote it as much as we possibly can with Don't Cross the Line. It's our 20th anniversary promoting good work, good sportsmanship, good sports personship on and off the field of play. People have been conducting themselves brilliantly. Yes, we're going to have this day in, day out, week in, week out. We need to show awareness to stop it, to cut it down, because you'll never, ever end it all. We know it. There's going to be, as you said, we just taught incidents, things pop up that you wouldn't expect. So it's going to happen again in grassroots football. But we all need to work together to make sure it doesn't really happen. That's all we can do. And with our campaign, that's all we've been doing. We're putting the posters out. Please share it. If you can, we're asking clubs, we're asking teams, committees to get behind it and give the kids something to do. What could they do to support the referee, the officials on the day? Some of these will have liners as well. So that's a good thing to do. So we'll have liners, we'll have people getting involved in the... Because there will be cup games, I should imagine so. Um, that's why you're going to have liners. 
it is a fire you know what I mean and um, so all we want you to do shake hands go out there make sure that you support that referee now clubs if you've got pennants or if you've got medals over and you want to get a medal for that referee the official on the day hand it over show your respect respect towards the officials make them feel welcome it's easy this is what the awareness week is all about or weekends people getting behind our referees and making sure that they stay within the game we need them in grassroots football they are part and parcel of a game we all talk about it when the referee's not there managers have to take over it's not the same not the same for the kids not the same for the teams not the same for the coaches who have to referee they don't like doing it so really we do need our referees regardless of them getting paid you've all got the chance to go out there and take the course and become a referee if you're talking about the money if you don't want to do it, then don't start shouting and screaming that they're getting paid. We need the referees within grassroots football to support our youngsters, teach them the laws of the game. That's what they're there for. And the, the youngsters need to learn off them, not learn off us because we've not taken our courses. Have we? No, we haven't. And many of the referees are 14 years of age, youngsters, and we've got plenty of experienced referees. And you see the yellow armbands. Some county FAs are making me or asking referees to wear a purple shirt i think the armband was absolutely fantastic i love the color black you can see the t-shirts that we've got that represents referees has done for many many years take your day, days back to keith hackett and the days you know those were brilliant those are day, the referees and i think referees should all be on, in black i think it's part and parcel of the game so come on let's get together yellow armbands means they're under 18 officiating and the experienced referees as well they'll be looking after the youngsters we talk to the youngsters every weekend we make sure they're relaxed and know someone's watching them watching the others if you know what i mean it's it, it is all about encouragement that's what we need keep our referees within the game and obviously tomorrow would have been shortage of referees anyway because many of them go to the grand national which is a massive sport event, isn't it? As well as the Everton Fulham game. Um, not too sure on the kickoff time for Everton Fulham now. Um, but obviously the play tomorrow, we do know that. And our show will be on a little bit earlier than normal tomorrow because everyone wants to take in the Grand National and pick a winner as well, don't they? And I love this. This is one day in the year that I really love to see. It doesn't last very long, even though it's four and a half mile or whatever it is. It's, it's a long race, but when you time it, it's over in minutes and people just think, what's all the fuss about that's gone? Done and just another year gone. So hopefully we'll all pick the winner tomorrow. Imagine that. The bookies have been cleaned out. That's great. That's what we want. Anyway, um, I've been through and studied a little bit, but let's first and foremost, let's make sure if you've got a game tomorrow, an early kickoff, loads of respect. It's not just about the 29th. It's week in, week out. When we support our referees please that's all we need to do and don't forget we're getting loads of loads of people now joining up for our tournament and um, we just need loads of respect on the sidelines people are pulling me people are just and i haven't really bombarded it yet because i've concentrated on the respect awareness weekend no ref no game we all know what that is so please do not cross the line this weekend or any other weekend and if you're going to entry same goes there don't cross the line. Just enjoy yourselves day out. People want to come to visit Liverpool. Let's hope they go away talking about it and saying how good they enjoyed not just the race, but the atmosphere and the hospitality around Merseyside because we can do really, really great things, I must admit. It was a lovely, lovely night last night as well. I went to visit training with the youngsters, DXTL under sevens, who haven't had a game. And lucky enough, they got a friendly because they had a cancellation this coming Sunday. Otherwise, they wouldn't have had a game for many weeks. And we had a friendly the other day, thanks to KB Thunder, who put up a friendly with us to give our kids a little bit of insight into, yeah, get the legs stretched and let them play. And we've got a friendly on Sunday um, because games have been cancelled. Um, yeah, it, it's just one of those things where we went last night and watched them train. And well done to the coach Jack there from Little Plays. You give the kids a full of workouts and they concentrated and done their own. No messing around. They really got to grips with it. And it was lovely, really lovely to see how Quarry Green all mixed together, get their training sessions together. And I was mixed with plenty. I haven't seen a lot of for a while, but it was nice to catch up with everyone, letting on to people, talk to people, 
conversations and that's where we know there was a competition and tournament that they're all going into. So we're, yeah, we're looking forward to it. We really are this tournament. It is boosting up, but we're hoping to have loads going on on the weekend. So you can get involved in that. And what we want is teams who are decent, good level. That's all we're asking for. I don't like really using a good level, but I don't want teams coming and sort of like getting Bob Bars with better teams and they're saying to us, oh, you pick and choose your teams. We're not. We're asking teams to get involved now. It's a national tournament. We had Isle of Man, um, but we're not too sure what these can do the three days. It's a three-day tournament for our 20th anniversary to give something back. But obviously you do pay, you know, because you can't do a tournament for nothing. We'd love to. Love to make it free and invite all these teams. If I get a good sponsor, it'll be free. That's what I'm saying, but it's getting that sponsor who wants to support what we're doing. And we're trying to get the media there as well. So fingers crossed, it's our 20th anniversary. Should be a great tournament, should be loads going on. On the Saturday, Sunday and the Monday for the finals day, which is the bank holiday Monday. It's the last bank holiday um, weekend of this year, isn't it? So August... 26, 27th and 28th. Put that in your diaries. Get in touch with myself, Mal, at don'textheline.com. If you're a team that's visiting Liverpool over this weekend and you've got a few days spare, why not put your team in the tournament? Sevens, eights, nines and tens. It's £70 per team, but you've got to have the friendliest sidelines in the world. It's all about respect, all about our referees. We want to make sure that we're all singing off the same song sheet and support the referees. And we do want a fantastic tournament. So it's going to be well worth and we're still, as I say, we're getting loads of inquiries, booking these teams in. And please, if you book your team in, remind me, maladontextaline.com, because sometimes you can forget to put a team in and we don't want them missing out, I assure you. Anyway, that's the tournament, that's the awareness weekend. Now we've got the Grand National, haven't we? Just have a sip of tea, how long we got? Oh, we've got plenty of time to talk about it. But as I say, it was lovely to see the setup for Quaddy Green and Kirby last night. It was lovely to meet Colin, and we had a good conf lab, talking about football, talking about things in general as well. Really good conversation, nice to see Col Fulton, brilliant, and JP, and quite a few of the managers and parents as well. All stop to talk and have a little gab as well. Nice to have a catch up. And if you have not got no football, which we ain't tomorrow because of the Grand National, it was always good to see the kids being back with the man, seeing them for a couple of weeks, and it was lovely to see them. Anyway, hopefully they'll be sharp because they've got two cup finals coming up in May, so they're going to be busy, and we're going to be busy as well because we want to try and do an under sevens. Now, if you've got a player who's just coming into football and they want to join a team, I'm looking for two more players. Under sevens, get in touch with DXTL Club DXTL under sevens again. It's man at don't text the line dot com. Trying to get through loads and loads of information. First and foremost, I need everyone supporting the Respect Awareness Weekend, 29th of April, right through, and it goes through to Monday because Everton are away to Leicester. So we need everyone, the Premier League clubs, we need the referees, the governing bodies, everyone, especially the county FAs, to publicise it through the leagues, that's all it is, push it all out, get everyone going, get behind our referees and send in the images with your team and you might just win a nice prize because we'll have someone donating something and your team could win it. So on the day, quick photograph with the referee, shaking hands, that's all it's about, bringing the teams, the referees, the mums, dads, if you can get a full team photograph with all the parents and the referee to say, well done ref. You know, that could be a winner. We could be looking for something like that. Get them into me, the images, and we will also put them social media and we'll give it a mention on our podcast and on DXTL TV from the Touchlands. Thanks very much to my graphic designer as well, Anis, who also said I didn't um, give him the contact details and he's talking to me about the audio. If you think the audio is not good on this one, it's okay, I think, on the SoundCloud. If not, get in touch with me. Also, get in touch with me about this, and we'll try and get someone in to sort out the audio from the studio. Uh, because Anna was saying the audio wasn't too good. So, yeah, we want to make sure that it is. So let me know, please. And if you want to contact, if you're looking for a graphic designer, it's I-A-M-V-Y-R-U at gmail.com. Okay, that's the web designer. 
I A M V Y R U at Gmail dot com. I could have sworn I did put that out, Alice. I'm sure. I'm sure he just wound me up. Anyway, there you go. Yeah, brilliant, fantastic for all his work, and hopefully I've got all kinds of discount for all this advertising. And it's, that's the way it works. We'll get you loads of people, and I'll put on social media as well and Twitter and we've got the awareness weekend so bear with me people are starting to look for graphic designers and we'll get you some work there as well okay now to the Grand National have we got time yes we've got time when I say we've got time here's all your feet look at all the colours there look at the colours absolutely fantastic that is what you need to do to look you've got to pick one of those just pick a colour because it's the Grand National anything can win I assure you, but I don't think tomorrow is going to be an outsider's day. And anyone who's just looking for something to do, your bookies will help you when you're going around there. They'll help you out to write a better. They've got it all sorted. And also, also, if you're looking at the form, well, it's going to be good. I can't say good to firm. I can't say good to soft. The ground is good. So if you do like reading the form, read about these um, heavy horses, the horses that can do the business on heavy ground that's good to fame really they can use that um, but they are they're the form horses now I've done a little bit of um, I'm not sort of giving you that but I, I, I've got a sneaky feeling um, on one horse at the moment and I'm working really hard on it not studying it but it's just there and it's just telling me that this could be the winner on a Saturday and now we've got I've looked at this one and we've got 11 eight year olds in the race, four 11 year old horses in the race, 13 nine year olds in the race. Look at it, this differently. This is a different way of looking at things. Six 10 year olds and six seven year olds. That's all the age of the horses there as well. Does it mean anything? Well, sometimes it does because if you look, the older horses, the more experienced. Just like your referees as well. That's what it's all about. More experience to being around, to being going to different courses. And the younger horses in the Grand National, mm, seven year olds, a little bit. Ooh, I, I, I might just, I could just say, leave your seven year old out of it. But I think there is one seven year old, a grey, that is fancied only because it's a grey horse. And a lot of people will be backing it because it will be the only grey in the race. But there's always a story around the winner. We know that. There's loads of stories. There's a female jockey in there who's just suffered, has been suffering from cancer. Now she's riding in there. That could be the story to look for. I think that's the grey horse as well. I don't know. Always a story behind the Grand National winner. You watch when it comes out tomorrow. Now, when you work out all the age groups on these horses, my, my idea, I think it's going to be a nine-year-old or an eight-year-old and I'm pointing towards an eight-year-old tomorrow for some reason I really am um, and there's that cuts it down again because it gives you now 24 horses not the 40 to look at an age so this is me this is my logic behind things look at those age groups because they seem to have more I'm not saying an 11 year old won't win it or a 10 year old no I'm not but I just think those age groups are the the force behind a Grand National winner. Have a look at all the age groups over the years and let me know. Well, that's something to look at anyway. So good luck to all your horses. And Gordon Edwards, just give you an idea, he's got four runners in a race tomorrow. And I'm looking at one of those horses of his because I think he's going to be there or thereabouts, I tell you. Um, it's telling you the horse, isn't it? Well, I'm just looking at it. I'm not giving it out. But that is my breakdown of the Grand National. And do you know what? Have a look at this. And I was doing it before. Try it yourself. Look at all the field. Look at all the horses. Look at the names. And make a story up out of every single name that's in there. It really is interesting. Give a story to the kids. Give a story to yourself. And come up with a massive story. Including all 40 runners. And do you know what? You could send that to me at maladontextaline.com. I come up with a cracking story and you could get a fantastic story out of the Grand National winners. Believe me, have a little look at the field and tell me you make a story up and use all the names 
of the Grand National Winners 2023. It's really interesting and it'll keep you, it's like a puzzle, it keeps you going and you're happy with yourselves but write it down. I was doing it in my head, I didn't write it down but I come up with a cracking story and believe me, honestly, and what a start to it and what an ending that you can get out of the story. Have a little look and let me know what you think. It really is clever and I don't think many people will do it but just have a little look at the runners and riders and write them all down or write a story including every single name of those horses and I bet you what if you come up with the best one and send it into the TV it could be even published it really could food for thought okay there we go we've come to the end of our show thank you very very much indeed for tuning in to us listening to us we'll be back again tomorrow um, yeah Premier League is back hope your team does well if you're playing grassroots football hope your team does well if you're having a little best at Grand National I hope your horse does well also and a little mention to Gordon Johnson I noticed him yesterday at the Grand National straight away Genshin everywhere and he didn't tell you that he had a little share in one of the horses there that won a race I'm sure the whole world will be on it now because Gordon does like the publicity and the free tickets and I bet he got plenty of food there as well well done to God we'll see you tomorrow round about well it's going to be early I might do it about three o'clock tomorrow nice early show put your feet up relax enjoy today and let's hope you win tomorrow myself Marlene all the team at the grassroots show don't cross the line respect program no ref no game and our heart of gold initiatives which we'll tell you more about that during the week have a great night good night God bless